Welcome to PC Games Nostalgia, where we talk about yesterday's PC games today. My name is Jimmy Wilhelmsson, and I'm going to be your host for the next 20 minutes or so. The title we're going to probe into today is... Each time we bring a guest from the gaming industry to our digital studio and today's honored guest is Jana Nikkinen, the CEO of Divine Robot. Uh, very nice to have you here, Jana Nikkinen. May I call you Jana, by the way? Yes, of course. Thank you so much. Tell me a little bit about Divine Robot, first of all. You are heading that studio. How, what, what are you doing and, and for how long have you, have you been doing this? Um, yeah, I'm the CEO, uh, which I've been for a number of years now. I, uh, I started to work with the company about seven years ago. Uh, we're now a studio of around 20 in Malmö. And um, we started out actually as uh, mobile game developers. So we did a couple of uh, mobile games. This was around um, yeah, 2010, 2011. So just about when the App Store opened up for indie developers to... Uh, try their luck, uh, so to speak. So we did a couple of those, and then we did a few kids' mobile games, uh, educational games, uh, and then we headed right into doing uh, VR simulations, uh, such as uh, hunting simulators, training scenarios for police and military oh, really? uh, personnel. So a bit of a, a quick change there. But uh, we've actually worked with software development for many years, so not just games, but other kinds of uh, software. Um, and now we sort of left the consumer market for games. So we work with gamification and uh, simulations and so forth. We actually have a story. I don't know if you remember this, but I was playing a, a mobile game of yours. Uh, I don't remember the name of it. Uh, something with cars. Do you remember that game? Uh, Codbot City. That's the one. Codbot City. And do you remember? I was one angry customer. This was probably in the beginning of a journey. I was an angry customer who wrote something Probably not in your support channel, but on the uh, on the Google Play, um, you know, you can comment the game. And I, I probably get, I, I was angry about something today. I don't remember what. And you were the one answering. I have to apologize for my really uh, bad mood that day. But I had been, you know, doing different things. What 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 the things you do in normal life. And this was just on top of it when my three-year-old or whatever came with this game and it was somehow uh, bugged out or whatever. And you helped me and I felt bad afterwards. And then I realized after a couple of years when I actually met you, Ooh, this is the same lady. And I didn't have the courage to uh, say I'm sorry, but I, 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 will, I will say I'm sorry now for the bad review and my angry temper. I'm sorry. It was a great game. Speaking about I was thinking of that. Speaking about being um, caught up in, in everyday problems and uh, being angry because things are not going the way you want, the game we're going to be nostalgic about today is The Sims. And that's what it's all about. I mean, The Sims is obviously a, a simulation of running a family or running a career, running a life. And that's the game you have picked. Uh, that's the game you want to talk about that you feel nostalgic about. Tell us a little about what, what The Sims means to you. Yeah, I mean, this was obviously some 20 years ago. Um, and um, <laughs> like my, my father used to say, because he got a computer in the 90s and started to play Age of Empires and these kinds of games, uh, some of the Sierra city building games. Uh, and he said, I never had a computer when I grew up. Right. Well, that it was in the 50s, so obviously you didn't. Um, I didn't have a computer either when I grew up, but I was really very interested in computers and gaming so it wasn't until really you know around the around the year 2000 when uh, the guy i'd moved in with had a computer okay uh, that i actually started gaming for real uh, computer gaming so i did a bit of sim city and then i tried the sims and i mean these these kinds of games it's um it's kind of both hard and boring at the same time, but still <laughs> very interesting and challenging because you can do whatever you want. It's, uh, 
you know, it's you have to try and create and lead a successful life in a sense. Like you have to juggling your career, your chores, and family and personal needs uh, is kind of challenges that women have been facing for you know ages already. Uh, so it's like you start from scratch, and then you have to see what you can do with it. Okay. But you only get like this much time every day to be able to like advance your career or improve your house or whatever. Um, it's yeah, it's kind of a strange, strange idea in a sense, it's like a virtual dollhouse or whatever. To me, um, I've I've wondered sometimes. I also played uh, The Sims when it, the original The Sims when it came out in 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 two thousand. The Sims has always been called a simulator game, but it's also a role playing game. What differs role playing games from these Sims games that you got caught up in, according to you? Um. Yeah, that's hard to say. Um, I mean, having played SimCity before, this felt like a natural extension of that because you're not just managing the city, but you kind of zooming into a neighborhood, into a house, into a person. Um, so it's like, I suppose, a natural follow-up on, on that kind of game. Is it um, really a natural follow-up? I mean, SimCity is running, you're the mayor of a town. And that's fine. Yeah. You, you, I, I would never. You, I don't know about you, but I, I will never be a mayor of any town. I will. I wouldn't have anything to run. Uh, but a family, a family, I, I, I run. And and so I, I haven't tried being a mayor, but I have tried. Believe me, running a family. And so why would I even want to do that in a computer game? I I, I don't think it's the natural. Uh, it's a natural um, successor. But you do. This is really interesting. In what way do you think it's a natural successor of of, for example, SimCity? Yeah, I think because once you run the city, it can, of course, be interesting to really kind of zoom into all these individual uh, neighborhoods and houses and beings that make up the city. So it's uh, it's part of the whole picture, I think. And uh, sure, I mean, you know how to run a family uh, or, you know, you do now. <laughs> and uh, I didn't say I know it, but I try. Hand, <laughs> <laughs> on the other hand, playing The Sims is more like, you know, you play the creator or the god or whatever and you right. can... You know, you can be nice or you can be bad, and people have, you know, been playing this in many, many different ways. Uh, of course. So you're not always playing to win. I mean, the replayability of, of games like The Sims is, of course, uh, huge. Uh, but you, you're saying that you're not only playing to win the game, to have great careers or be the nice guy. You can also play it to experiment. What happens if I, if I'm the douche or whatever? Yeah. Yeah. I mean. I don't think I particularly played it like that, but mm -hmm. I know many people, of course, who did. Like, this is your chance to try out, like, what would happen. And, you know, when you Google what people have, uh, like, the worst things ever that happened in The Sims, you, you find some really sinister stuff that uh, people tried out. So, you know, it kind of reveals that is everybody really a psychopath if, if only the circumstances were, <laughs> you know, uh, in their favor, so to speak. Yeah. Um, the thing that made you feel nostalgic about The Sims from 2000, has that thing changed over the year, years, you think? Oh, definitely. I mean, I, I played The Sims, the first Sims, and then I played Sims 2, uh, which unfortunately is what made me go off PC gaming altogether, because oh. this game was on like, I don't know, six discs or something <laughs> that you had to install, and <laughs> my computer was never the same again after, you know, a couple of broken installations. So. I got a PlayStation for my birthday after that, and then I just stuck with console gaming and mobile gaming. So I didn't try um, the follow-up versions, but I've tried The Sims Mobile, and my kids play it. And it's nowhere near the same because they don't have any needs anymore. It's like uh, the challenge is gone. You can just play around and do different stuff, and it feels like it doesn't matter. Like you have so many different options. So it lost kind of touch with what real life is about. Uh, it's, a, it's a different kind of game, in my opinion. Do I understand you right? P uh, the Sims was what got you into PC gaming, but also what got you out of PC gaming. <laughs> yeah, I would say so, actually. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, do you think that The Sims in any way has affected or influenced what you've been developing yourself at Divine Robot or any other uh, gaming idea you have? Do you, do you know, can you feel that you've gotten inspiration from The Sims in what you do? Um, maybe not directly, mm -hmm. but indirectly maybe. I mean, 
we work with simulations. So it's, it's to create uh, near, near life, like uh, experiences or simulations where you immerse yourself. Obviously this is using VR um, to try and create an environment and see how you would react in this environment and how you can improve your skills in whatever it is that you're, you're training. So. Uh, are there any other memorable moments? I, I know we talked a bit earlier about uh, uh, toilets that broke down and everything, everything in your home really can r just break down if you don't take care of it. It's all very, it can be very frustrating and, and annoying and, and stressful playing The Sims, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and burglars could come while you were asleep, or I think you could get electrocuted if you tried to fix some electronics in your in your home. Uh, so <laughs> it was it was really horrible, bizarre things uh, that would happen. Um, and yeah, of course, as I said, people would experiment and build homes where with no doors or no toilets or whatever, just to see what would happen and uh, uh, how, how how the Sims would react to it. There was. Um, this feature where you could see a photo album of like memorable events in The Sims. Yeah. <laughs> you know, sometimes it was the most horrible things like the cradle was on fire, you know, <laughs> a, a fire broke out in the kitchen and the baby caught fire. And then that moment would be captured in the photo album. <laughs> or like social services came to take the child because right. they weren't able to cater for them or something like that. Children cannot die. They're just brought in by the social services. Am I right? But, yeah, but people could die, right? The like they could either go to military school or social <laughs> services would take them, but you wouldn't actually see them die. No, I don't think so. From what I know, I'm, I don't know if, it, if you notice, but I'm, I'm not such a big fan of The Sims as you are. I think it's a great, um, it's a great uh, mark in history of gaming because uh, as we've both spoken about before, it's it somehow brought the, it wasn't the first casual game, but it brought a new perspective of casual gaming. And it also, it seems, brought a lot of uh, non-traditional gamers into the industry, like people who didn't normally play games were very much into The Sims. And also, before this, um, it was uh, playing games, PC games especially, was a very uh, male uh, hobby, but The Sims were actually played by, according to Will Wright himself, 60% uh, women. Uh, mm -hmm. and, and you were uh, one of them, and obviously you just told us that you got into PC gaming. Uh, what is your... Um, how do you watch The Sims now? I mean, as, as when it comes to casual gaming, what was the, what was the milestone there? What, what, was the different, what was different about it? I think it had a very low threshold for people to start to try it out because you couldn't do anything wrong, well, except for cradles uh, <laughs> being on fire or whatever. But right. um, you didn't fail. You could play any any way you, you wanted to. You didn't have to follow a particular way of, uh, of playing. Um, but also what I, what I read, which I didn't know also, was that half of the development team that made The Sims were women. Really? Uh, and that's very interesting uh, in terms of speaking of um, diversity in the, in the games industry, which is something that uh, game developers have been struggling with for a long time. Because if you have the same kind of people who, who make games, they're going to appeal to the same kind of audience. And this obviously was, uh, was an example of uh, otherwise. Uh, also, apparently, which I didn't think of either, was that this was like one of the first games where there were same-sex relationships. So apparently mm -hmm. it was very big in the LGBT community, uh, which is also very interesting. Um, I happen to know also, maybe not the first Sims, uh, but um, Will Wright drew a lot of inspiration from uh, psychology books and behavioral books about American society. It was kind of made as a satire about American life. I mean, having a career, having nice children, not sending them to military school, not having social services, uh, taking them. But also, apparently, he was influenced by this little beauty, uh, the book Understanding Comics by Scott McCloud, which is really about how an, a comic artist uh, can communicate to its reader with just comics itself. I mean, how do you explain in just one frame that this dude is angry, this dude is disappointed, or even telling more, uh, getting more information uh, out there? And 
when I read that, it's kind of obvious to me. Yes, I mean, obviously, because The Sims doesn't really speak to you that much. Uh, the currency is not dollars. The, 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 the language is Simlish, I think. It's just gibberish. This girl is fancy. And then what about that's not? And you stop our gun jawing on it. Yella Butar. Ellis. Ellis Angkan. And, and, and it doesn't mean anything, but still, it's very universal. Um, I think that might have had a very uh, strong appeal to, to people who are not that fluent in, in, in English, which you have to be, obviously, in, in, in when it comes to RPG, RPG games. Is that something that we can draw inspiration from today, or is that something we're already drawing inspiration from today? I mean, how you speak to the gamer without actually telling him or her uh, straight out what's happening on screen. What do you think? Yeah, I'm sure, because it's a, it's a kind of universal language. It's, you know, si simple emotions. And also, when you looked at the Sims needs, they are also universal needs, of course, like hunger, comfort, energy, whatever. Um, and with the language, you didn't understand anything, but there were these little... Uh, pop-ups with uh, symbols yeah. like showing Speech if they bubbles. were talking about yeah. the weather or right. if something was on fire there was this everybody like thought about a fire and, and were scared and it was very easy to um, to see that i'm sure yeah i'm sure we can learn or have, have learned a lot from that to to be able to appeal to uh, more people and one of the things, when, when you said that about spe speech bubbles or pop-ups, one thing I remember now, just now, was that you could have, you could throw parties or, or go to parties, uh, and there you could hook up with, with other, I mean, guys or, or women and kind of, um, you know, flirt with someone. And I remember that you could actually tell, not by speech, not by uh, text or anything, you could actually tell if the, the things you were doing, if your flirting was going well, or if, if it was appreciated, or if it was just annoying and going down the drain. I mean, obviously, it, it wasn't subtle, it was just clear messages, but it's still cool how The Sims could really tell you, mm. I'm trying to do this, and this is a response I get, and I immediately yeah. get, okay, yeah, that's a, that's a, that's a good one. I, I'll, I'll keep doing this until I maybe do it a little too much, and, you know, blah, blah, yeah. change that strategy. I don't have the patience. Was it a game you could ever finish? You cannot finish The Sims, right? No. It never ends. Your career, no. I mean, you can even, you can be an astronaut, you can be a, a, a whatever, a, but, but what happens when you reach the final, when you can't, don't, can't earn anymore? You just change career or whatever happens? Or you get an existential crisis, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> you have fulfilled all your needs and uh, your, your career. Uh, I suppose, you know, you have kids and then uh, they have to fulfill their uh, yeah. needs and careers and uh, <laughs> it's just like real life. Uh, what if you, uh, this is of course speculative, but what if you, I put you in front of The Sims on an old PC from 2000 right now, what do you think your reactions would be? Would you be afraid that it would suck and it would not be the same experience? Or do you think you would feel this warm feeling of nostalgia and, and, and bring yourself back to the year 2000? Um, both, I guess. Uh, I mean, you... You tend to forget how bad things really were, and after 20 years, it's uh, it's quite bad mm. uh, in terms of mm. graphics and interaction and so forth. Uh, but I guess I would I would make um, I would yeah make a decent try uh, to see what I could do and uh, improve their lives. <laughs> would you still have the same patience? I mean, The Sims is all about patience, really. You're doing the same thing for a couple of hours, and then you just you know add the numbers up. Uh, would you have the same uh, tenacity? No, probably not. I, I guess I would prefer to have the game run in the background. Like if you could do, if you come in like every now and then and do some, you know, focused efforts and then things would improve uh, on their own in between, that, that would feel a lot better. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, do you have any special memories? You talked about exploding toilets or, or toilets that broke down. Do you have any special memories from The Sims that, uh, other than those of the burning cradle? <laughs> or whatever you talked about from the memory book. Are there any specific uh, situations that were funny or horrible or that you remember? Um, yeah, I think that's what stands out the most when things would caught fire or just break down in general. 
uh, or the kids would be taken away. Uh, and now I don't even remember if this was in the, the original Sims or Sims 2, but when people would die, uh, they would sometimes come back and haunt you. Um, people would be afraid of their of their ghosts and so forth. You could like you could bury them in the backyard and you had a tombstone in the backyard and okay. they would come and haunt the house. <laughs> Nothing is published in, in, in vacuum. Every, every game you develop today is in the market for a reason. It, 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 it's in, influenced by all other stuff. Do you think that it's typical that The Sims were released in the year 2000? I mean, the year 2000 was obviously a big deal for us who, who were there and who were somewhat grown up. Uh, we had had the millennium bug everybody was afraid of. Do you think, I mean, The Sims, was it somehow affected or influenced by the time, the time being, what was going on uh, in the world during then? It's hard to answer, of course, but if you mm. think back. Yeah, I mean, the thing that comes to mind is also the Tamagotchi era, so to speak, which was before in the 90s. Oh, yeah. Um, which became really popular, you know, to look after your own little device. <laughs> yeah, right, your physical <laughs> hardware uh, animal that could really die. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I think the, the Sims is kind of continuation of that, but here you take care of maybe a whole family and, and their household. Um, but it's, it's a similar kind of idea. And, um, and if I remember, it was released very early in the year 2000 as well. It's, right. It's, yeah, it's kind of interesting, uh, a new era, so to speak. Yeah. And I mean, at that time, people have had almost started to use emails more frequently and things were really kind of changing uh, technically in society. Right. Uh, so the, the, the Tamaguchi was a Japanese thing. And The Sims is a very, very American thing. So maybe it's the it's another take of the, of the very same um, the same happen the same thing the same genre of games. I don't know if it's Tamaguchi is a game really, but it's it's mm. definitely some kind of gamification. You had to. Yeah. I never had one myself, but you have to feed it, you have to cuddle it or whatever, and you have to keep it alive. And that's basically what you're doing in The Sims. Keep keep shit alive. Don't let yeah, it burn. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. Don't let it die and, and don't let it burn. <laughs> Yeah. Sorry. And the Sims was also, you know, called uh, not a game. Uh, and again, speaking about casual gaming and uh, female gamers, it's kind of typical that these kinds of games would be called not games or not real games. Uh, I think the same has been said about mobile casual games like Candy Crush. There are a lot of people who play these kinds of games, but if you ask them if they are gamers, they would, no, 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 I'm not a gamer. The Sims have changed. It, it has changed, you say. It has become something else. It's less hard and more of an experience. And that's really what kids are doing a lot today in games. Sometimes I look at, at, at the kids and I say, what, what, what are you doing? Well, we're, we're harvesting this and we're collecting that. And I say, are there any obstacles? No, we're just doing it. And, and it's, it, to me, I mean, I'm an old geezer. It's like, so what's the point? Well, they think it's fun. Okay, it's fun being a collector. And uh, uh, maybe that's what The Sims ha has turned into because that's, that's, that's a thing. I mean, it's been a thing for maybe 10 or 15 years. It's just that I, who, who am a bit older, don't get it. But The mm -hmm. Sims is actually still here because it could transform into this collecting and experiencing thing instead of just, you know, uh, being hard. Because The Sims was hard, I think. It was yeah. stressful. Yeah, of course. And I mean, if you were slacking for a while, things would just turn so bad. Like, they would fall asleep or, or uh, pass out on the lawn or, you know, the kitchen would be just full of dirty dishes. And uh, yeah, the to toilet and the shower were leaking. And it was just horrible if you, if you were slacking uh, just for a little bit too long. <laughs> Jana, thank you so much. It's been great having you here. Is there anything I have not asked you that you would have want me to ask you about The Sims? Um, I don't think so, but I have. I actually found a quote when I was looking for these horrible things that people were doing with their Sims, and I think it's a fun way to end it, so I'm going to read okay. it now. Um, I built them a house which could be afforded without cheating. 
I got them jobs, which paid them enough to survive. I then made their whole lives revolve around their jobs, which they kept from day one, continued to play their whole unfulfilling lives out until they died of old age. They died whilst living in that same tiny, poorly finished house with no savings and the above average TV. I did get them pizza delivery occasionally, so I don't think I was a complete monster. <laughs> that, that's wonderful. That's, that, I mean, it's, it's a great way to end this, and it's also a very sad way to end this. I mean, The Sims is not a cruel game. It's a fun game. <laughs> Thank you so much. Uh, good luck Thank with everything you. on Divine Robot, and I hope to talk to you again soon. Thank you. Bye.